DJ from Morgan Gumbo, I've got my guest here, Dustin from Side Room Games. We've been talking about some of his spicy games that he's come out, uh, print and play games that he found. And one of those is one that you were kind enough to send to the Gumbo for us to check out, Fallen Angels. Now, the timing did not exactly quite work out. We did get a video out. And we did get the video for uh, on the Dice Tower. We didn't get yep. the, the show because of everything going on. We're a day late, but we're not a dollar short. And you're going to explain exactly. why, isn't that right? Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, we um we just finished up on Sunday and uh, had almost a thousand backers on that one. That one's a it was our first contest winner from our first, very first fifty four card contest we did back in twenty eighteen. We finally got it to to publish uh, this year. Um, it's it's amazing. It's another one by John Keen. It's all about deduction. So if you like if you like logical deduction, you'll love it. Um, it's a cooperative game where you're basically you're trying to collect evidence to put away uh, these criminals from back in the nineteen twenties uh, uh, era of Australia. And so each of those uh, pictures and art is authentic uh, shots that were taken from that era that have been cleaned up by John and put onto the cards. These are um, scary and, people. Look at these people. Dustin. Look some, at them. Some, of them are, some of them are very interesting. And his, he has a little background book that he put together that we're putting in the game as well that has some information on some of the key players that are there that are part of the game. Um, so it's just a really cool theme, a really cool mechanic. Um, it plays very similar um, to like Hanabi where – you hold your cards in a certain way and you can see the symbols on your side, but your partners are seeing the symbols on the other side. And so each time you do a deduction, you, your partners are setting up their cards so that some symbols are on the, uh, that they see match and some don't. And so you basically have to decipher from what they see and you think they see to what you see and how that compares to what you don't see on the side of the card that you're trying to guess. It's just, again, I, I don't understand how it works. I don't understand how he does, does these designs, but it's just really clever and it's fun and it like just burns your brain in the right way. And it's, it was just, it, when we played it the first time, like we're just like, I don't understand how this is not like a, 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 the winner. Like it just, it's, it was, it was perfect. So I remember calling Carlos and Bradley and I'm telling the game, uh, actually, I want to say uh, it was Carlos that, that got me to reach out to you or you posted something on that Facebook group. I can't remember now, but I played yeah, Black Sonata I I before. It. Was that it? Yeah. I played Black Sonata that... before, and then you had this game come out. When it came to the house, I remember thinking to myself, I'm reading the rules, I'm going, this can't work. I don't even understand how this would work. And, and I've yep. got a solo shot of me and Carlos playing. I'm looking at my cards on one side, and I'm looking at his cards, and that's the su suspect, if I remember right, that's the suspect that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to narrow down. And, of course, Bradley and I – have two totally different sets of cards. I can't see what's behind his cards. I can only see what's in front of everybody. And you're trying to put all these symbols together. And uh, my brain would melt. My brain was melting playing the game. I think I told you that night, we didn't play it once. We didn't play it twice. We played it three times back to back to back. <laughs> so if our brains are melting playing it, how is John doing this? I, I don't get it. And he, he, whatever system he uses, he actually did the math on it to figure out the best way to set up multiplayer oh, where really? it's, it's the same yeah he did he did a ton of like simulations i think where he basically tried to figure out what is the right card count and setup for like two players versus six players so it's all kind of on the same same level um and yeah i just it's it's wild like i just don't i don't understand it but it's pretty it's pretty good okay i got a bone to pick with you though. now we played the game you asked me for a quote we had played the game three times back to back to back so still fresh in my mind and i said hanabi on steroids with absolutely diabolical deduction puzzles in every hand. That's a, that's pretty accurate, right? Yes, that, that is exactly how I would describe that. <laughs> you you and I have something in common. We're both we're both fans of the Secret Cabal. And Steve <laughs> yep. puts a quote, and his quote is: "Fallen Angels is a great card game, deduction game that fits in your pocket. The pictures are from actual criminals in the twenties as well, so it really helps build the theme." Yeah, except last week he tells us on the show he never actually played it when he posted the quote. <laughs> It, it's it's I got it's a funny thing with you. I played the game. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. I we have had Steve blurbs for every one of our Kickstarters, yeah. and my goal is to continue to do that. And I think this one, just because of the timing and the pandemic, I'm like, I sent him the copy, and I was like, hey, 
even if it's just something random, give me a blurb. And he's like, all right, I can do that. So, <laughs> so, so Steve, I, I enjoyed, uh, I don't know when you posted this, but I enjoyed your, your post uh, pretty recently. You said something like, even if I have to make up a quote from Steve, we're going to have a Steve Spang quote. <laughs> exactly. In every we have to have a Steve quote. Yeah. Name father, I knew right away. I said, I'm going to have fun with Dustin on the show. He's got my sense of humor. I like that. He's got my kind of sense of humor. <laughs> so, no, uh, they hadn't got to play it. It's not his fault. You know, it came to them when oh, they were, yeah, sure. you know, the middle of the COVID-19 crisis. They could. We got ours early enough to where it was actually uh, a couple of weeks before the whole thing fell apart, you know, with the, mm -hmm. our last, probably the third to last game that we had. So luckily I was able to get enough plays in there, get a nice video out there. And I was super glad this thing funded easily. You guys, that has got to be one of the big worries for you as a, as a Kickstarter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and th this one was interesting because it's the first game we've had that's not a solo game. It's, it is a, you have to have, like, John tried and racked his brain but couldn't find a solo variant he liked. And so we're like, okay, well, we're just going to roll with it, you know, as a as a multiplayer game. And um, we built up this big solo audience. But luckily, you know, the, the people who support the company uh, and, and, you know, I've liked what we've done so far. They, they hopped on and then they spread the word. And so we actually, we were pretty success successful. I was thinking we'd have around a thousand backers or so. And that's what we got. And I'm sure we'll have some some uh, late pledges, too. So I, I was very happy. Steve posted a link to the Kickstarter in there. Again, If uh, you and I were talking off air. If people want to get this game, it's not too late. Even though the Kickstarter ended yesterday, they still have a chance to get Fallen Angels. Is that right? Yes, yes, yeah. So we will have a pledge manager up for late pledges on GameFound as well. Um, we were working on the finishing touches this morning. So I'm hoping to have that live probably by tomorrow. We'll have that up. So, How much has changed from the, you know, you find this 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 print and play. Well, actually, I guess in this case, it wasn't really finding a print and play. You already had a relationship with uh, with John, right? Yeah, we already had a relationship with John. And actually, I mean, the contest was going on. I think it was it was either right around the same time or maybe a little bit before we actually had the Black Sonata Kickstarter. Um, and so we had already had, you know, Black Sonata under contract. But we still ran the contest um, and, you know, took everything, you know, try to keep it, you know, even keel, you know, made sure we were, you know, fair and balanced. And it was just it was an amazing design. And so um, it was our standout winner for sure. Uh, so it was pretty it was nice to be able to work with him again. Um, and he has a couple of other games that he has that are out there that we are looking at. and We might try to work with him in the future, too. So he's been, he's been fantastic. To work with. I didn't get a chance to check how much has changed since the contest. Because it, so it, it came with all the artwork already, right? Yeah, it came with all the artwork. The only thing that changes and during the contest, I think he had it only around 40 cards. And he actually found a way to, when he was doing his you know, analysis and, and, and tinkering uh, in the last year or so, he actually got it to where it was uh, 54 cards and went from four players to six player supporting. So, um, but, but yeah, but that's that's the only major change. So the, the rules are, are the same. The setup is a little different because you now have the option to go up to six players, but um, the mechanics are, are the same as they were in, during the contest. Graphic design, all of that? came ready to go or did you have some input yep, yeah he, he did all the graphic design and artwork on this one uh you know since he was using art assets from the from the classic uh the, the pictures he found uh, but he did all the graphic design set up for this one too so 